just heading into the West Gate for tonight's meetup game. I think we actually got uh, kind of hooked up tonight with a suite from the West Gate. Okay, I see you. What's you up? Know? Look at this. Your own bar. The Brad Owen bar. Oh wow, look at these. Hey, look at that. Chandelier. Guest bedroom. Robes. Guest bedroom. Guest bathroom. Very fancy curtains over the shower. Master bedroom. Ropes. Chair thingy. Jacuzzi tub. So shower. Brian and I are just doing a uh, live stream now. As soon as we wrap this up, heading downstairs to the meetup game. If you guys want to say hello to the vlog, the time is now. Get your get your chat in there. There you go. <laughs> Meetup game time. Are you gonna win tonight? I kind of have the feeling that I won't. Kind of have the feeling every meetup game. Yeah. Well. Um, no. <laughs> All right, as you can see behind me, games are underway. Meetup games, multiple meetup games. I think we have four two five games going. I think, I think there's an additional one two game happening over here. The room is pretty full here. And uh, just getting underway here, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be going through the hand analysis here uh, on camera as I usually do. Just because it's awkward for me to be standing out here talking about hands into a camera when there's uh, all these fun people to uh, hang out with and chat with and play poker with. So maybe we'll switch it up a little bit this time, do something a little bit different, try a voiceover for the hands. I don't know, we'll see. It's an experiment. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, coming at you voiceover style, Brad Owen style. Poker is underway here at the Westgate, 2-5 No Limit Hold'em, in for a little under $1,000. Right off the bat in this game, I got several playable hands. I think I played the first seven or eight hands. Unfortunately, they didn't really uh, connect. They didn't really work out too well here on the various flops. For example, this pocket sevens hand facing this flop, not gonna work out too well. Somewhat similar result in this hand. There is a $15 raise on my right. I look down at pocket fives. I make the call and then it gets three bet behind me to $55. Initial raiser calls and I call. Unfortunately, the flop comes all over cards. We're just gonna have to let this one go as well. Shortly after that, I look down at ace king off suit. I raise it up to $15. I believe in this hand there was two callers. So we go three ways to a flop of king, seven, four, rainbow. The small blind leads out for $20. The board is pretty dry here. If there was a flush draw on board, I think I would be more likely to raise. I think I can maybe get some value out of a raise on the flop here. I'm probably not gonna get too much more value than that. So rather than possibly blow him off this hand with a raise, I just go ahead and flat call and the player behind me folds. The turn is a brick and this time a small blind checks. Definitely gonna go for some value here. So I bet $50. My opponent makes the call. So off to a river card, which is an ace. At first look, this looks like a great card for us. We now have top two pair. Unfortunately, I think it's actually a bad card for us because it seems like his most likely holding is a king. Let out on the flop to see where he was at. Check call the turn. Now, with this ace on the river, he's not going to be able to beat too much of my range here. So when he checks it over to me, I'm going to try and make a very small bet considering the pot size. Try and get a crying call from a uh, king-queen, king-jack, king-ten type hand. I bet $45. My opponent goes into the tank for a little while. Kind of gives it a, a laugh, a little bit of a laugh considering the bet size, but eventually he folds. 
I go ahead and show him and uh, I let him know what a bad river card that was. And he did say it was a bad flop for him, but turns out it was a good river card for him. In this next hand, there's an early position limp and the cutoff raises to $15. 15 is a pretty small raise size considering one limper already into the pot. So when I look down at king queen offsuit, I think my preferred action is to three bet this hand. We have blockers to a lot of good value hands and when the cutoff makes it such a small raise size, I think we can win the pot a decent amount preflop. So I go ahead and make it $50 on the button. The big blind cold calls and the cutoff calls as well. So, so much for winning that hand preflop. The flop comes jack 10 high with a flush draw and they both check to me. Pretty good flop for us. Flop ourselves an open ender plus two over cards. So I go ahead and bet $65. Big blind folds right away. Cut off, thinks for a little bit. Then he shows an ace and then he mucks his hand as well. If getting there and making a straight with this hand would be the best result, winning here on the flop with king high, not too far behind. In this hand, I look down at six five of hearts from early position and in a meetup game, this is a damn near premium hand. So I go ahead and make it $15. There's a call in middle position and the cutoff three bets to $55. Never folding in this spot, so I go ahead and make the call, and the player to my left calls as well. Three ways to a flop of seven, six, deuce with two clubs and one heart. Flop ourselves middle pair plus some backdoor possibilities. We check to the three better who bets $65. With all those aforementioned possibilities and our middle pair, definitely not going anywhere at this point, so I go ahead and make the call. The player on my left folds. Heads up to a turn card, which is pretty good card all things considering it's a three of hearts so all of our backdoor possibilities are now live i check it again and this time my opponent bets 120 dollars so it's a pretty interesting decision point in here now in this hand i think i have somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 dollars effective if we flat call here it would be really unfortunate to not improve on the river we'd be left with second pair facing an opponent who three bet pre-flop then bet flop and turn We'd be in a really tough spot on the river, and I don't think we'd be able to call. We also might not be able to win at showdown. That really weights my decision on another option, and as you might guess, it's not the fold option. I should be able to put a lot of pressure on my opponent here. This board is very connected and probably favors my range a lot more than a late position three betters range. It's much more likely that I am going to have all the sets on board here than my opponent is. I could also have four five, I could have seven six, and let's not forget, this is a meetup game, so I could even have three deuce here. Hey, it's possible. When you combine all of those factors with the raw hand equity that I have here, I can improve to two pair, trips, straights, flushes, and when you partner that with some fold equity, I have to think that a jam is the most appropriate, the most plus EV move. So that's what I decided to do. I go ahead and I slide out the $700 approximate into the middle. We don't get snap calls, so that's a good thing. We put our opponent into the tank and he's thinking for quite some time. Eventually he decides on a fold. So seems pretty likely that my opponent had an over pair in this situation. Of course, it's possible he could have had a club draw, which again, not a bad result if we get him to fold the club draw because he's still gonna win that hand some percentage of the time, but he wins it zero percentage of the time when he folds. Pretty good result there and happy with my line. In this next hand, I'm at a new table. As we've always done in these meetup games, Brad and I swap tables every hour or so. Try to do our best to play with every single person who comes to the meetup games. So here I am at a new table and I have the button straddle on. There's two limpers and a middle position player raises it to $50. I like that an ace deuce of spades on the button and I decide to defend. It's probably towards the bottom of my defending range here. I'm going to be facing some reverse implied odds here a decent percentage of the time, but for a discount, having the $10 in there already, plus the button, plus a suited wheel ace, just a little bit too good to fold. So I go ahead and make the call. Both limpers call. So four ways to a flop of ace, 10, 10, rainbow. There's two checks and the three better puts out a C bet. With top pair, I'm not exactly loving it, but definitely cannot fold. So I go ahead and make the call. There's one fold and the second limper calls. So three ways to a turn card, which comes the king of clubs, bringing a backdoor flush draw. The first player checks and the three better puts out a bet of $85. Our kicker has obviously improved to a king now, we're playing aces and tens with a king. It's good news and bad news because we're chopping with all of the aces now. We don't have to worry about our kicker so much, obviously losing to ace king and a random 10. When the player behind me makes the call on the flop, it's pretty tough for him to have anything other than an ace or a 10. Maybe some potential Broadway cards drawing at a gut shot straight draw. Some of those even get there here on this turn card. 
So when the three better bets $85, I'm not sure I like a call so much because we're going to be chopping a big percentage of the time here, if not losing to a 10 or an ace king. So I'm not too sure I like my decision to call here, but I do decide to make the call and see what happens on the river. The opponent behind me calls as well. So it seems that our likelihood of scooping this pot is approximately, well, probably never. The river comes a jack and the first player checks. The second player, he puts out a bet of $200 this time. I'm completely done with the hand at this point. I go ahead and fold. The player behind me goes into the tank, thinks for a long time, but he eventually decides on a fold as well. The three better goes ahead and shows us his hand. So we all can get a good look at what drawing dead looks like. Ace 10, flop full house. Pete from Colorado, nice hand, sir. He flew out to Vegas just to join us here in this meetup game. You hop on a plane just to come play in a meetup game, you deserve to flop yourself a full house. In this next hand, Pete from Colorado makes it $20 to go. There's a call on my right and I look down at pocket sevens. Happily make the call here. And we go three ways to a flop. Flop comes 10, three, three with two spades. Pete makes a C bet for $20. The player on my right calls and I don't think I can fold here for this price. Pretty happily call actually. The board doesn't improve too many hands and the price is quite reasonable. So I make the call and the three of us see a turn card which is not my favorite turn card. It's the ace of spades, third spade, it connects with a lot of the initial raiser's range. This time both players check to me and I'm just gonna check here, take a free card, try and get to showdown as cheap as possible. The river's a brick and once again the action checks over to me. Sticking with the plan of trying to get to showdown, so I go ahead and check back. Pete from Colorado shows us ace king, so that's gonna win. Top pair, top kicker, connects on the turn. Player on my right had pocket deuces, so we were good until the turn card. And hey, you fly out from Colorado just to attend a meetup game. You deserve to turn yourself top. No, actually, you're getting a little carried away here, Pete. Come on. guys just wrapping up the session say hello to Nicanor one of the friendly dealers here at the Westgate poker room YouTube YouTube Nicanor YouTube he just told me something really uh, interesting and really cool that I thought you guys might uh, like to hear just a real quick message I've been dealing for 12 years I'm dual rate I've been flooring for over 10 years and I told Andrew that I couldn't believe how awesome his followers are awesome. never had a problem uh, they're great tippers and overall great group of people. That's uh, that's cool to hear. That's uh, that's all you guys out there getting those props. Thanks for saying so. And uh, fantastic dealer, by the way. Fantastic dealer. Thank you. So, the portion of the evening where we hang out at the bar is upon us. Wednesday in January, maybe not the busiest time of year. We had four tables of 2-5 going, and uh, the crowd is slowly filtering out here to the bar. And I am nicely not drunk, which is fantastic. <sighs> Wake up tomorrow, not hungover, bliss. Anyway, I, uh, I got into this game for $1,600. Uh, had some fun hands, had some hands that did not go my way. Cashed out for $1,228, I think, $1,227, something like that. Lost 300 something, small loss uh, for a 2-5 game, less than a buy-in. Just another fun evening here at the Westgate, Westgate Wednesdays. So I was just about to hop in the car and uh, head home for the evening, but uh, just wanted to say one last thing here in this blog episode. I know we've talked a little bit or a lot about how there's different reasons 
for playing poker, different motivations for playing poker. Some people are out there grinding for income, some people are out there for a gamble, and uh, some people are out there for the social aspect of it. These meetup games obviously are more geared towards the social aspect, even though we have you know, different people in here for different motivations within this own game. But the cool thing uh, is what Nicanor, the dealer, was saying about how the crowd that comes to these games is just such an awesome crowd of people. It's been awesome to get to know all of you guys and uh, all the different backgrounds that you come from. All sorts of different conversations happening both at the poker table and at the bar after the game. These games that Brad and I put together is definitely something that uh, I'm proud of, especially when the dealer uh, compliments all of you guys as a group of people, as just such a nice group of people, well-behaved, good tippers. This is a group of poker players, mind you. And uh, think about all the stereotypes that poker players can sometimes have. Definitely not the case. No stereotypes here. Um, yeah, so proud to put these games together. Happy to get to know all you guys that come to them. Thank you to all of you guys that come to the games. Cheers.